When installing an aftermarket subwoofer into a car audio system, it's commonly known that it's important to match the impedance or ohm load of the subwoofer to your amplifier. By using multiple subwoofers and or multiple voice coils, we can use series and parallel wiring to carefully design a system to have a target final impedance. But did you know that there's a wiring style that we should generally try to avoid? In this video, let's discuss and do an experiment. Now, first off, a big thank you to our channel sponsor, Crutchfield. I know that series and parallel subwoofer wiring can be confusing, and that's why I always recommend checking out Crutchfield's subwoofer wiring diagrams. On their website, they have a tech article where we can simply pick our application and see what wiring possibilities are available. Perfect for double checking your plans prior to purchasing car audio gear. And they also have an amazing US-based technical support team. So if you do have additional questions about the car audio gear that you'd like to purchase, they can help you out. Even better yet, they've helped out our community with a special CAF fan offer. So if you wanna save on your next car audio purchase, be sure to check out the links down in the video description. So what is the wiring style that we want to avoid? Well, let's do a quick review and make sure that we understand them first. First off, we have series wiring. Let's use these two single voice coil subwoofers here as an example. With series wiring, the positive amp terminal connects to the positive terminal on the subwoofer. Then you have a jumper wire that goes from the negative of that subwoofer to the positive of the next subwoofer. Then a wire from the negative terminal of that second subwoofer goes back to the amplifier to complete the circuit. Now the next wiring option is called parallel. With parallel, we connect the positive terminal of the amplifier to the positive terminal of the first subwoofer but we also connect that same connection to the second subwoofer as well. Then we connect the negative terminal of both subwoofer one and two back to the negative terminal of the amplifier, thus completing the circuit. So basically, whenever we see positive connected to positive and negative connected to negative, that's going to be a parallel connection. And when we see a positive connected to a negative, that's going to be more of a series style connection. Now with complex subwoofer wiring, like the example on screen, it is possible to have both parallel wiring and series wiring to achieve a desired result. In this example, you can see that each of these subwoofers is a dual voice coil model, meaning it has two sets of terminals, which gives us more wiring flexibility. And in this case here, the subwoofer voice coils are wired in series, which we can see since there is a positive to negative connection. But between subwoofers, they are wired in parallel. So now that we have that understanding, what is the wiring style that we generally want to try to avoid? Well, if possible, when we're designing our car audio system, we want to try to avoid series wiring between subwoofers. But of course, this raises the question, why? Well, each and every subwoofer and speaker in existence is of course going to have slight differences. Even if they are the exact same model, which they should be because you shouldn't be mixing models anyhow, it's unavoidable that there are some small differences in manufacturing. Additionally, with multiple subwoofers, it is quite possible that even their positioning in the subwoofer enclosure will lead to slight differences in their loading and their mechanical behavior. But what does this have to do with series wiring and why does it matter? Well, in series wiring, these small differences can result in induced voltage or back EMF across the series connection. Essentially, the subwoofers and speakers can modulate one another and cause distortion. So to do a bit of an experiment here, here I have two single voice coil subwoofers and right now they are connected in a series connection. Imagine if you will that this is the wire that is connected to the amplifier and we've shorted it for our test here and we've got the positive lead going to the positive terminal of subwoofer number one we're then jumpering from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of subwoofer number two and then we have the negative terminal going back to our amplifier connection it's important to note that our subwoofers here are in fact in an open air environment you wouldn't be able to do this in a subwoofer enclosure because the air movement would have an effect from one subwoofer to the other so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push on subwoofer cone number two here 
and I want you guys to watch subwoofer cone number one. When I push down on the cone of subwoofer number two, the cone of subwoofer one raises. This opposition to the movement shows the modulation that occurs between subwoofers in a series connection. Now in test number two here, we once again have our amplifier connection that is simulated and shorted, and we've got the positive connection going to the positive terminal on subwoofer one, the negative connection going to the negative terminal on subwoofer one, and then of course both those positive and negatives are connected to the second subwoofer, so we have a parallel circuit. Let's try once again pushing on the cone of subwoofer number two, and you can see that there is no modulation issues, no back EMF into the first subwoofer. So now we know when we're designing our system that it's best to avoid series wiring between subwoofers. But this of course raises the question, what about series wiring between voice coils on a dual voice coil subwoofer? Is that okay? So here's the deal with a dual voice coil subwoofer, both of the voice coils are affixed to one moving mass together. Thankfully, this makes it impossible for the voice coils to modulate one another because they cannot move independently. So in summary, although it's not the end of the world if you do have to use a series wiring connection between subwoofers, it's just not ideal. You could be causing some undesirable distortion, especially as you increase in output level. Now don't forget, if you'd like to see some easy to understand subwoofer wiring diagrams, definitely be sure to check out our show sponsor, Crutchfield. You guys can learn more and get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link down in the video description. A big thanks to them along with Jerry and the rest of the Patreon membership team for making these videos possible. And of course, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching.